Okay, so welcome back. Hitesh here. I'm welcoming you in another Golang tutorial. Now, let's go ahead and close this model because that's all we want to do in the model. If you have more values and pointers and references, go ahead, feel free to define them up here. I am not interested in any of that as of now. I've shown you the basic method of it. Moving further. Now, this application is not that much big. If that's, this application would be a little bit more bigger or I want to just show off to some recruiter and all of that, I would be putting up a database connections into a separate file itself, database helpers into a separate file it itself, and the controllers in its own separate file. And now you know that how the structure works on with that. It just needs to be inside a folder and that's it. Go automatically brings up all these uh, instances for you in the import statement, so you don't have to worry too much on the importing as well. So now I can focus more on to just one file, which is controller. I'll keep my database connection in that as well. I'll keep my database helper methods in that as well and the final controllers as well. So three things are going in one file. In case you have an issue with that, go ahead and create your own files into that. And once you're done with this series, go ahead and place that. It would be great exercise for you as well. Now let's go ahead and move on to the controller and which is this one. And I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call this one as controller.go. I know, not the best naming in the world, but this is all what we got. And the package, I'm gonna call this one as controller. Okay, a couple of variables or kind of a global variables that we are going to need up here. The first one is going to be is connection string. Now this connection string is what is your database or where your database is located. In case it is localhost, so go ahead and just say, uh, MongoDB and uh, colon and whatever the port number 2701 and all of that. So go ahead and give that a string in case you know that. In case you're following these tutorials very closely, that means we need to go ahead and grab this one up here. So this is all good. They are all fine. I'm going to go ahead and click on connect. Give me that string back because I lost that. So we are going to go back and we'll just paste it up here. Now interesting thing up here, don't just paste it uh, blindly. Go ahead and replace your password here. Now usually, such password comes from the environment variable file. In this case, again, since I've mentioned that, we're gonna just go like this. And looks like I'm getting an itchy throat. Anyways, uh, this is all good. Now we have this connection string and there are a couple of interesting variables up here. Connection string is one of them. Usually even the connection string also goes into the environment variable, but we are taking liberty of tutorials here as I'm mentioning up here. Then we're gonna go ahead and say that DB should have a name as well. So we're gonna provide a name. Uh, inside that. So let's go ahead and call this one as Netflix. Very, very idealistic name. And apart from this, we are also going to need a collection name as well because that's how MongoDB works. And I'm going to call this one as simply Watchlist. Feel free to name it up as much as you like. Now moving on, uh, this is going to be the most important as a connection. What is this? This is going to saying that, hey, this is a collection. Uh, what I mean by that is I want to take a reference of the MongoDB collection. How you actually go ahead and do that? You go ahead and mark it as a pointer and Mongo actually gives you that mongo.collection. Make sure the C is capital up here. As soon as you do this, this will import the driver and this is the most important. Since we are marking it as a pointer, that means this is an original reference and we'll be passing it up like anything. This is going to go all the places in. Okay. So this is all done. Now all we need to do is uh, simply go ahead and connect with Mongo, Mongo DB. There we go, Mongo DB. Okay, so for this, we are going to go ahead and create a method. Now this is not going to be main method. This is going to be an init method. Now init is a specialized method in the Golang, which runs only at the very first time this entire application is going to execute. This is basically an initialization method and uh, this runs at the very first time and only at the one time. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it all the option. So the first thing that you have to actually provide are the client options. Okay, there is a syntax. So whenever you get connected with uh, MySQL, MongoDB, Postgres, there is always a syntax that you have to follow and that is only responsible for getting a connection and that's what we are building up. So first thing is we need to bring up this client connection. So we're gonna call this one as client options. There we go and this will be created by providing options. Again, thanks to MongoDB for providing this. As you can see, these are the drivers and everything. It's coming up from MongoDB and we can go ahead and say, I need to get a connection of the client, and that's how you do this. And then you go ahead and fire up a method, which is apply URI, and there we go. 
And inside this apply URI, you go ahead and provide this connection string. So let's go ahead and say connection string. And that is it, your client options are done. But this hasn't actually fired up an, uh, a connection request itself. That is done here. So we are gonna say connect to MongoDB. So how this is going to be done? This is really simple. We're gonna go say Mongo dot connect. There we go. And we go ahead and provide a couple of options here. The first thing we are going to go ahead and provide is the context and I'll work with that. And notice here, I'm writing a to do context up here. Okay, this is not about to do list. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. And the second option that you provide is the client option. Now, in order to work with a little bit more that what is this context and to do option, let me show you that because this is an interesting concept. You should be aware of that. So let's go ahead and say Golang. And I can go for go.dev. That should be a better option. Let's go into packages. And yes, we need to explore this together. So we're gonna say, I need to see what this context is. And this is the package which is defined for context. And remember this very first line, the only thing that you have to define up here, that a package context define the context type, which carries the deadline, cancellation signal, and the other scoped values across API boundaries and in process between. So basically what it's saying is, Whenever you are making a call to some machine which is outside of your machine, that means database is usually outside, and in this case, especially, it is onto some web server, probably some another state or country. Then you need to provide a context that for how long I can make a request, and when what happens when the request goes off, and if the connection is still active between us, there should be a context on which we can work on with. And that's what this entire context is done. And if you look at the types of these contexts, and uh, not the types actually, Yeah, there we go, this is the type and the type context. You can see that there is a background. So if anything happens in the background, it returns a non-nil empty context. It is never canceled and has no values and had, has no deadline. So if you want something that keeps on happening in the background, just go ahead and use the context.background. And if you want something, uh, this also is a non-nil empty context and code should, be, code should use the context.todo when it is unclear which context to use. So in this case, if you have no idea what context to use, in all those places you can use uh, the to-do. In most of the methods, when we contact to the MongoDB that, hey, insert this value or give me this value, in that case, majority you'll be using uh, the context or background, but in majority of the cases where you have no idea, you can go ahead and use this to-do. And that's why I have used it up here. So this is not I'm making any to-do app. This is a type of context that I'm working with. Uh, can I use a dot background here? Yes, I tried that, that also works fine, but that keeps a connection alive and it goes on in the background. I read some of the blogs and they all said that you should use to do up here and the context dot background there. Okay, uh, quite a lot of stuff that is going on in here and hopefully this will bring up the context and it didn't bring up the context, so let me try to save that. And yep, now it brings up the context for us. Okay, now this obviously is a chance that where we get failure. Remember try catch method that you have used in other languages? This exactly happens up here. This might give us a client or might give us an error. So obviously uh, this is how it's going to go ahead. And there we go. Now we're gonna proceed uh, cautiously. So we're gonna say if error is not equals to nil, uh, that means it's a time to panic. So we're gonna, instead of panic, we're gonna say that, hey log, I want to go ahead into the fatal mode with the error. So this will bring up a more information. Yes, you can do panic here as well, but this is a better approach. Okay, once this is all done, obviously we want to print up a message that says mongo, mongo db connection success. There we go, nice and easy method up there. Okay, once this is all done, let's go ahead and save this one. This is all fine, uh, but this is not all done. We have just made a database connection I don't want just a database connection. I have these variables up here. I want to create a database, a column name, and a whole bunch of other things. I need a reference of that. I don't want to just go every single time, dig up into those values. I need a simple reference of that so that I can use them anywhere. And that's why I wrote important here in this collection. That is exactly which is going to be floating around all the places. Let's go ahead and work on with that. So this variable called collection, this is going to give me a client. Remember, client is given to me by uh, this MongoDB instance. Come on, suggestion would be nice. In that, I'm gonna say, hey, give me a database. And in the database, I have already given a variable DB name. And inside that, there is a collection. And the collection name is stored in the call name. 
there we go now you have reached inside the database inside the collection so everything is nice and just for myself I'm gonna go ahead and say that if the collection instance is ready for me it's not exactly an instance more over a reference but yeah we are gonna call this one here so this is up here and we're gonna say collection instance is ready or you can say collection reference is ready whatever that is okay quite a lot in depth talk but when the next time you'll be coming up you'll be doing it like back of your hand and you'll know exactly what all is happening just for a quick summary uh, we go ahead and first create the client option these client options just simply say that this is the uri that i will be using up yes there are a couple of more ways of handling this exact option situation it is mentioned up in the documentation in case you want to dig it up and then while collecting connecting to the mongodb itself we whenever we are going to connect we are always going to pass on this context uh, whenever you connect with something which is a reference machine or something going on another computer or something we just always pass on the context when we don't know what to pass on we pass on a to do context otherwise we can go ahead and say do it in the background and that is also nice we pass on the client option and that's it this client is now completely capable of connecting with the database we use the same thing to get connected inside a database inside a collection so that we don't have to keep on hunting for the reference Quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.